Hello, welcome back. It's Michael again, and we are back to our Java programming and revision series. Um, we were in the middle of talking about inheritance, which we started over the last two episodes. And when we started this, I said that we are um, going to answer a question that was asked in the comments by Kirill. Um, he had a question um, where he asked about talking about inheritance in general, but then asked a very specific question as well, and that was how can we arrange it so that a superclass um, in its code can access a field of a subclass. Um, if you know anything about inheritance, you will know that superclasses cannot see their subclasses directly. So um, it is not very straightforward. It's in fact a very interesting question. And I had promised at the beginning of um, this section talking about inheritance that I would come back to this concrete question after we had covered the basics of inheritance. So. Over the last two episodes, we have talked about the concept of inheritance, and now I will come back to that specific question and try to answer this, um, how we can arrange this specific um, situation where we want in a superclass to access a field from the subclass. Let's have a look. So let's have a look in our code where we have an example of a um, field access. Um, so we have here a constant, that's a constant field because it is final, static and final, of the infection time that is currently set in the person class, that's our super class. Um, let's assume that we want to have a different infection time for children. So children recover more quickly, they don't need 200 simulation cycles. Copy then, copying this out, out here, I'm going to my child class and now I'm pasting that in here so that I can now set a different infection time for a child. So let's say a child um, has an infection time of only 100 simulation cycles. So remember we set it to 100, well we set it to the infection time and then we count down. Um, let's see whether this works. If we compile this, we go here, we run the simulation for a short while and stop it very quickly. Here is um, an infected child um, and we can inspect this and Let's have a look. Here is the child. The infection value for this child is 163. So the infection value at the moment is more than 100. And remember the infection uh, value comes down. So it clearly started um, not at 100 because it's, it's still higher than 100. We can infer here this infection value started at 200, not at 100. Um, so the um, the infection time here of 100 for children clearly was not applied. So let's investigate why this is the case. So the infection time itself, if we search for it in this class, is not used in the child class. The point where it is used, if we search for it here, that's defined in the person class. And here in our infect method, it is used in the um, person class. So what we have observed here is that the person infection time was being used even for children, even though in the child class um, this was redefined. Now I said before when we talked about dynamic dispatch for methods that private methods are not dynamically dispatched. Um, the methods have to be public or protected um, or package protected to be um, dynamically dispatched. So here our field is private. So we could make a wild guess and think, well, maybe if our um, field were not private, let's make it protected. Maybe then we get dynamic dispatch access for our field. So I make them both protected so that this constant definition overrides this constant definition. Uh, it's a reasonable assumption. I can already tell you don't don't get that too too strongly into your head because it will not work. Uh, we can make an experiment to show that we do the same as before. We run this for a short time until we have an infected child here. We look at the value in the infected child and we have a um, we see here the value of the infection is 145. So again, it is more than 100. So clearly it started with more than 100. So this did not work. So if we are now looking at our infect method where that was used, this um, when we were in a 
child object did not use the definition from child. So if we write this dot infection time to just make it really clear that we mean the infection time of the current object and the current object when that is a child we want the value taken from the child class definition. So let's try that out. Does that make a difference? Um, let's look at that here. We've got an infected child. We inspect it. We look at it. 166. Still more than 100. So again this did not work. This did not use the infection time that is defined in the child class even when the current object is a child object. Um, so here we are back to the question um, that was asked in the comments. Um, we have now a definition of a field in a subclass. We have the code that accesses it in the superclass. Um, and we want here from the superclass to access the subclass definition of the field. And it's not working. How do we do this? So that was the specific question that was asked in the comment. Um, the reason first why this does not work. Um, the reason it doesn't work is that field access for instance fields or constants is never dynamically dispatched. Field access is statically bound, which means that here the value of this constant gets um, decided at compile time. At compile time, when the person class is compiled, it looks for the value of infection time only in the current class and it finds this one here. And it does not matter whether at runtime the current object is a person or a child object. It is decided at compile time that um, this value here should be the 200 that is defined in this class. So this whole clever mechanism that we discussed in the last episode with dynamic method, method dispatch that allowed us to do this really nice clever trick of method overriding um, does not work with fields. It just doesn't exist for fields. Um, so our, our intention here to use 100 for children just does not work this way. So how can we solve this? Um, one possibility we could do is we could copy this whole infect method out, copying that here, putting that into the child, let's put it here, into the child class. So now I am overriding the infect method um, in the child class. Now this has a number of problems. First of all we can see we have here um, a number of errors in my class, status I can't access, um, the set status method I can't, I can't access, infection, num infected. I cannot access any of these things because they have private access in person. I could now of course fix this by going back to person and either make them protected or provide accessor methods for these. So that could be fixed um, with a bit more work. But the problem that I have here is still that the solution is not very nice. The solution is not nice because now what I'm introducing here is code duplication. I have the same method um, written in the person class and I have it written in the child class. So when I write the same method twice, that is known as code duplication, it's a very loud big warning sign of bad style. Code duplication is always a bad idea. Um, we can discuss that a bit more in detail uh, at another time, but the short version of it is code duplication leads to more work, to inconsistencies and potential errors when we make later changes to the code, because we might make changes to one copy of the code and forget that there is a second copy and not change the second copy in sync with it. So it's a pain and it's a source of potential errors. So we would look as one of the very strong style guidelines for a good programmer, we want to avoid code duplication. So just copying this method here, even though it can be made to work, is not a great idea. So I'm going to undo this, I'm going to delete this again, because I don't want to go down that path. I don't want to introduce code duplication to solve this problem. The this dot before infection time I can, by the way, remove because it has no effect. That didn't help us. In any way, we are back to the question is how do we access the infection time from the child class here while we are writing the code in the superclass? Um, the 
clue to the solution was in the fact when I said before that dynamic dispatch only is applied to method calls. So the solution here is just that we um, replace the access to the infection time constant with a method call. So what we're doing here is we are writing ourselves an accessor method for the infection time. So I can write here protected um, int get infection time. Um, so it is a very simple accessor method. Um, and here I just say return and then I move the access to the constant, I take that out here, to my body of get infection time and then I copy the method name here and replace the access to my infection time with a method call. Now here I have now the, the um, access to the infection time uh, done with a method call rather than with a field access. And a method call, as we said before, this is dynamically dispatched. Um, so I write a comment here, say return the person's infection time. Not a very exciting comment, but for completeness sake it's always good. And now I am copying this out. I'm going to the child class and I'm putting that in here. And I have here the um, method that actually looks exactly the same as in the person, but because this is statically bound to the infection time in this class, and in the child this will be statically bound this infection time to this value, the implementation actually is different. Now we could argue that we have again code duplication. This method implementation is the same as the one in the person class, but now we have minimized the code duplication to a single line, so the absolute minimum necessary, and we do not have more code duplication than absolutely necessary to make our, um, our program function. So if we go here now, and I run this briefly until I have somewhere, don't have an infected child yet, let me see, there's an infected child here now, let's inspect this it has just been infected and now the infection is 83. So it is, even though it has only just been infected, it is under 100. That gives us confidence, especially if we check it with another child here again, 88, that the children are now um, have a shorter infection time. We can also see that if we run that a little bit um, more over here, for example, we can see that we have a situation where the children have already recovered um, from the infection while they're parents are still being infected. Here we have the same situation, here we have the same situation and there. So we can see that now children recover more quickly. So this works now. The solution to this um, question therefore, as it was asked in the comments, is how does a subclass, sorry, the other way around, how does a superclass access um, a field from a subclass, which it cannot directly do, the answer to that is you organize the access so that goes via a method call and then you override that method call in the subclass and that gives you the solution that you need. Um, there is another related situation sometimes where the code is not directly in the superclass but where you have an abstract superclass. We haven't talked about abstract classes in this series yet but we might at some future time then you would have an abstract definition of the accessor method in the superclass for those of you who are dealing with abstract classes. So that hopefully answers the question. Play around with this a bit. That is enough for today. Thank you for listening. See you next time.